Today, when you look at Jerusalem from a bird's eye view, you can see a mosaic of architecture. For over 4,000 years, this city has experienced many changes that significantly impact Jerusalem's appearance today. What has not changed, however, and where it is worth starting, is the topography of Jerusalem. Therefore, in our first episode devoted to Jerusalem's geography, we will discuss this city's unique location and consider why this place is theologically significant. At the end of the episode, I will also discuss an exciting fact about Jerusalem's geography and how a misunderstanding of geography can lead to a tradition that has little to do with reality. At the same time, do not forget to subscribe to this channel to receive notifications about the next episodes on YouTube. So let us begin our journey. Jerusalem is located in a part of the world we call now the Middle East. The road to the heights on which the ancient city was built leads through the Judean mountains situated between the Mediterranean Sea and the so-called Dead Sea. Many hills surround the plateau on which Jerusalem was created. Therefore the psalmist referring to Jerusalem wrote, As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, for this time forth and forever. A trip to Jerusalem is connected with a journey directed vertically upwards. The difference in elevation is mostly felt when traveling from the Dead Sea, the lowest point on earth, 400 meters below sea level, or Jericho, 258 meters below sea level, to Jerusalem, which is located at an altitude of about 770 meters above sea level. Regardless of the direction from which we come to Jerusalem, it is always associated with a climber. So we should not be surprised that many of the pilgrim psalms, the so-called Aliyah psalms, that is the songs of the steps or translating literally the one who goes to the mountain, refer to this experience. I lift up my eyes to the mountains, from where shall my help come? Even today, when we travel to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv, some feel a specific change in pressure felt in their ears. A high-speed train from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem has been opened, which allows reaching Jerusalem in 35 minutes through a series of tunnels cut in the mountains. Of course, you can also reach Jerusalem by car, as Israel continues to expand and widen the roads leading to Jerusalem. If you really want to feel like a pilgrim, you can also reach Jerusalem by foot. One of the most interesting routes is the route from Jericho to Jerusalem. And so in the footsteps of biblical heroes, you can travel among the spectacular gorgeous. But let us go back to the times before Jerusalem and take a look at the hill's location on which Jerusalem was built. There are three mountains and three valleys that have a significant impact on the development of Jerusalem. The mountains are Mount Moria, the Western Mountain, sometimes called Mount Zion, to which we will return later, and Mount of Olives. Out of these three mountains, Mount Moria was chosen as the best location for building the city. Although the western mountain is much larger and less steep, Mount Moria was chosen because it had one unique and necessary element for the city to survive in this dry climate – water. Water is priceless in the desert. The Gihon life-giving stream, which ran from Mount Moria, was something very special. With a continually flowing source of water, 
and protection in the form of hills, Mount Moria was established as the best place for the first human settlements. Over time, the city expanded to the west, on the western mountain, while the Mount of Olives was the eastern border of the city, on which no settlements were built and its burial functions were quickly determined. Besides the mountains that we have discussed, valleys also surround the city, which are dry basins of rivers that may periodically turn into waterways during heavy rainfall. And so, to the east we have the Kidron Valley, in the middle is the Tiropaon Valley, sometimes called the Central Valley, and in the west, the Hinnon Valley. If we look at the biblical text, the very location of Jerusalem has not only a geographical significance, but also a theological one. Multiple times we read in the Bible about the uniqueness of Jerusalem in God's sight. Even before the people of Israel reached the Promised Land, we read that God himself designated Jerusalem as his chosen place forever. When the Hebrews were still in the desert after leaving Egypt, God says to his people, But you shall seek the Lord at the place which the Lord your God will choose from all your tribes, to establish his name there for his dwelling, and there you shall come. We can ask the question, what is this place? In the book of Exodus, we read, you shall make an altar of earth for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen, in every place where I cause my name to be remembered. I will come to you and bless you. Again, we may ask, where was such a place created? As always, the answer is in the text. In Psalm 132, we read, For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his home. This is my resting place forever and ever, where I will dwell, for I have desired this home. Okay, but somebody may ask, where is Zion? It is where David established the capital of the kingdom of Israel. In the book of Chronicles, we read, But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. And so, even before David conquered the Jebusite city and called it Jerusalem, it was already chosen by God, as a special place of his dwelling. Moreover, we read that God will live in this place, live in this place forever, and importantly, make his name present there. How will God's name be present in Jerusalem? There are many interpretations of these words, but the most exciting and intriguing one is that God somehow physically wrote his name in Jerusalem's geography structure. How? Well, we talked about the three valleys that can be seen from a bird's eye view. When we look at all these three valleys, we can see a certain shape. People who know Hebrew may have associations with the Hebrew letters Shin when they look at the shape. While in Israel, such a letter can be seen on the doorpost of most Jewish homes. The letter Shin is on the so-called mezuzah, which is a shelter for a parchment roll with two Torah fragments, Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 11. These passages refer to the most important commandment to love God with all your heart and strength. Additionally, the Israelites were to put these words on the gates and doorposts of their houses. As it is written in the commandment, 
and you shall write them on your house gates and doorposts. Why are the mezuzahs ornamented with the letters Shin? Because Shin refers to the name of God, El Shaddai, God Almighty. And on some mezuzahs, there is an opening through which the word Shaddai can be seen on the parchment. Therefore, God's promise in some way is already fulfilled because you can see the name Shaddai on most Jewish homes in Jerusalem. Some, however, go even further and claim that such symbolism can also be observed in the topography of Jerusalem. If, in fact, God's name is somehow inscripted in the topography of Jerusalem, that would be an unusual remembering of the words, but I choose Jerusalem that my name should be in it. In this context, Jerusalem itself would become a symbolic door through which one enters God's presence. To learn more about this, check out my video on Jerusalem as a gate to Eden. I think you will like it. Finally, as promised, a bonus related to the topography of Jerusalem. At the beginning of the video, I said that we will come back to the Western Mountain topic, or as it is sometimes called, Mount Zion. For centuries, it was believed that the Western Mountain is this biblical Zion, this theological center and the mountain chosen by God. This is because of Jerusalem's very troubling history. After the period of Jewish uprising in the 1st century and the 2nd century AD, the Romans decided to wipe out Jewish history from Jerusalem completely. The city was demolished and rebuilt, the Jews exiled, and the name changed to Alia Capitolina with the Jupiter Temple at the place where previously the Jewish Temple stood. Now, fast forwarding history, at a certain point, it is the Crusaders who conquer Jerusalem and decide that the Western Mountain is this Biblical Zion. The Crusaders even managed to sell this theory to other people because it was there that some Jews began to make pilgrimages and see this place as the burial place of King David. And because of that mistake by the Crusaders, for many centuries Zion was associated with the Western Mountain. When archaeologists discovered the real city of David, which is below the Temple Hill, this completely refuted the theory that the Western Mountain is Zion. Today hardly anyone believes that the Western Mountain is the Biblical Mount Zion. But some people still call the Western Mountain Zion because of long traditions. For example, the traditional burial place of David is still there. Although it doesn't make much sense if David's city was on Mount Moria. And so, next time somebody will say to you, let's go to the mountain of Zion, ask him which mountain of Zion, the real one of the, or the fake one. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, I encourage you to comment. You can also subscribe to this channel to stay informed about the next monthly episodes on Jerusalem history. Have a great day and see you soon.